Thank you. Welcome back to the Rolling Ground Sports and Entertainment Show. Uh, we're here with my guests, uh, Coach Todd Bozeman, uh, Mr. Greg Boyer, and Mr. Self Empowerment, uh, Wilbur Skipper. Thank you for uh, rejoining us here at the uh, Zone Restaurant and Bar located at 5753 Crane Highway in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Thank you again for providing us with such accoutrements and such a fine location in order to uh, shoot our show. Uh, as we finish that last segment, we're talking a little bit about uh, directing the youngsters. Well, I have a question for you guys. Who's directing the adults? <laughs> let's, let's hope that these adults that are not doing any directing have enough interest in, well, you know, in the well-being of their children that they will let somebody else do it where they cannot. Absolutely. You can't do everything, but if you have trust in a certain individual, you have knowledge that this person has a little something that you don't in... So part of your village, in, in, so yeah, 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 part of that. Let that person come in and don't take it all personal. I don't need you to tell my child what to do or what to think. Absolutely. They do need that. And, and let the parents step aside where they are weak or where they don't have the expertise. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I agree with that wholeheartedly because I think in a lot of cases you have parents that are just too proud to take that approach to step aside and let someone like Todd or, or one of us come into this kid's life to help, just help out. It's We're not trying to take away parent. from yeah. being a parent, <laughs> you being a parent, but I think the kids now need all the help that they can get. And uh, to go back to a question you were talking about earlier in regards to where are the, the, the people out there to help? Well, myself in particular, Todd, all three of, all, all of us here, we're willing to reach back and help. We just need more successful people, whether or not they're athletes or just successful people, no matter where they, they come from or what neighborhood they grow up to, just come back and reach. If we can just take one kid, one kid, and help that one kid, that'll make a world of a difference. Okay, let's get back to this term in terms of adults. Now, I'll be honest with you, uh, I've been in this business of education for 30 something years. And I know that a lot of times when I'm trying to provide quote unquote guidance to young men and young women, um, I get a lot of pushback mm -hmm. from the parents. Now, uh, Brother Bozeman, are you, have you been finding it from time to time difficult to connect with either through your camps or some of the other strategies, some of the youngsters, because the parents are providing a, a barrier uh, to you getting through to their children. Right? You don't have to be specific about it, but just in general. So don't name names. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, I, I would say that, um, I would say that, uh, you know, I don't, I mean, it's there. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a direct to the point person. No. So, yeah, I know that's a problem. <laughs> I'm not but, um, so, so, so I kind of get that out front okay. right away. So um, it's the, it's the uh, when they go home, that that gets back into their heads. You know, it's kind of like when you, it's kind of like, uh, well, Skip, you have grandchildren, so I'm sure when- yeah. Only when, one, Todd. Okay. <laughs> your, your grandchildren, when they come, you, 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 you have them and you spoil them up, and then you send them home, and the parents gotta, you know, get them right back on that same right. path of, no, you're not gonna get what, what you know, what Poppy was giving you or exactly. Granddad was giving you. So, so it's, it's kind of like the same thing. Okay. You know, you send them home and it's like, it's okay to, to, to let them relax a little bit, ease up. But if they start complaining about something that coach is not allowing them to do, then that's when you got to go, hey, listen, coach didn't allow you to do that because, exactly. or just listen to coach, just follow what coach is telling you or, or your teacher or Grace teaching a, a, a young person, you know, the, 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 the music industry. Just, just, just listen. And, and exactly. sometimes, sometimes what happens is, is uh, uh, people don't uh, allow themselves to see the vision. Okay. Okay. And you say they it's kind of like themselves. Yeah, see? because kind of like uh, it's kind of like you know, have you ever been to a carnival and someone's drawing a caricature of you? Yes. And at first, you know, your friends are standing there going, <laughs> right. you know, they're doing all <laughs> that. Like, that's <laughs> not, not look like that. You're getting a complex. But then, <laughs> but then, yeah. So, but then at the end, they go. Then you can see them going, Oh, okay, I see it. I see yeah. it. So you know, if you're painting a picture. You know, it, it, once you start painting a picture, there's no way you could tell, you can't criticize my picture while I'm in the middle of painting it. Now, after I paint it now, now you could, exactly. you could have something to say. But you're gonna decide whether you want me to paint that picture based on what I painted before. Mm. So if I painted it before, then let me paint this one too, but I gotta go through a process. You know, I'm not, yeah. I might not put the grass first. I might build, put the sky in the picture first. Yeah, or exactly. I might have to put some other things in the picture first. That's a heck of a viewpoint. I never quite looked at it like that. I know the last time we did my, <laughs> my character. Never mind. <laughs> so so, so kind of having said that, let's talk a little bit about um, 
um, whether or not we're putting too much emphasis on this thing called sport in our society. I know that I had heard a while ago that Charles Barkley, you know, and I'm not sure I wasn't able to validate this, uh, said to someone somewhere, hey, you know, when I go into uh, an inner city school in, in Los Angeles and I ask how many people uh, want to play in the NBA or the NFL, 95% of the young brothers and sisters raising their hands say, hey, I want to be a pro athlete. Mm -hmm. Well, when I go to Beverly Hills and I ask that same conversation, it's 5% of the people say, hey, I want to play in the NFL or NBA. I know that Daniel Snyder and I are the same age. While I'm running around trying to figure out how to catch a ball, he's sitting around trying to figure out how to own the ball team. So do you think, or in what ways, is our overemphasis, or is there overemphasis on athletics, especially young, especially in the urban environments, that kind of then becomes a hindrance or an inhibitor to our growth and development as opposed to something that's building us up and then making us stronger? Well, I, I have two different ways of looking at it. Uh, first of all, again, I'm going to use myself because I went through the system. I think athletics plays a big role. And if you look back to the early 50s, with the exception of the, the penal system, uh, the incarceration uh, system, and also the military, when you talk about bringing people together, the multicultural people, what else do we have? So when you look music. at, well, music and music, I'm sorry, I forgot, uh, <laughs> didn't mean to leave music no, out. No, no, no. So when you look at it from that perspective, you look at the whole aspects of, of sports and how it evolves and how it brings people together, well, the real world is multicultural. When you get out of college or you graduate and you decide to take on a job, you're probably going to be working with multicultural people. So, so looking at it from that standpoint, I don't think we're overemphasizing from that standpoint, but it can become, uh, in, in some cases, to a point where you're telling the kid that you need to do this, but I think if you would take the kid and tell the kid, I want you to become a professional in something, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, I want you to become a professional basketball player or a professional football player. But however, if you get the opportunity to become a professional football player or basketball player, that's just icing on the cake. But become a professional in life, become a professional as a person. So then, therefore, after you graduate and leave college, you'll be better prepared for the real world. Okay, so when I was a kid, I played the recorder. I messed around with the flute. I never thought about becoming a professional trombonist. How does one become a professional trombonist? Now, seriously. Look, look hard work and luck. And what I always tell people that I work with is you have to put the work in and be prepared because as many people out there that are professional, there's a very small percentage of those that are really doing big things. Everybody else is mm. just doing it. So there's a difference and, between being a professional well, at it and... Well, logistically, professional okay. is if that's your job. Okay. You know, you can, you know, pay the rent, pay the car note by playing music, or you could live in, you know, a room, well, a house three times as big as this club. You're still a professional either way. But what I've been telling people all along is you have to really hone your craft so that when that opportunity comes along, you will be ready. Because there's nothing worse than a squandered opportunity. Absolutely. Nothing worse than that at all. So how do you hone your craft? I mean, like, and what you were doing, you don't have a bunch of people sitting around cheering you while you're practicing no, your you don't. trombone in you, your basement. You, how, you, how did you know, do all of that? I mean, it, it's the same thing with scales, the same thing with free throws. In any of that, mm -hmm. you have to be by yourself mm -hmm. and you have to know what looks good and what doesn't, what sounds good and what doesn't. If you shoot 20 free throws and you make 19 of them, you're having a good day. Absolutely. If you plan your scales and you can play them this fast sitting in a metronome, you know you're having a good day. Now, if that's your aspiration, when you get to that point, that's how you gauge whether or not you're doing good. You have to sit there by yourself and be and take an honest assessment of where you are at what you're doing. Now, once you quote unquote get there, do you need to continue to work on your schedule? Oh, you always have to Absolutely. continue work on them because uh, somebody told me every day that you don't practice, somebody else is. Absolutely. That somebody else might audition for the same job that you are. Because it takes me back to '87. I auditioned for Ray Charles. And I had been playing a lot, not had not been playing a lot at that time. And there were people coming in that were just wailing. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just one of those things where, had I really been on top of my instrument, I could have had that job. I learned at that point that you can't just sit back and rest on your knowledge. 
uh, and rest on your laurel. Well, I played with this person, I played with that, that person. That's all fine and dandy. What are you going to do today during this audition? You know, with, come draft time. You know, you got all these guys in this covered up football field. You know, what are they going to do that day? It's all, your stats and everything are cool. Are you going to impress me today? Yeah. That's what I mean. You have to prepare for that opportunity. Otherwise, you are squandered. Now, I know that in something like athletics, especially where what you do is broadcast, television, radio, et cetera, um, while you're in that moment, other people get to observe in that stadium you being in that moment, and they get to sort of evaluate whether or not you're sort of either squandering that opportunity or whether you're seizing that opportunity. I mean, how, in what ways do you prepare, uh, teach, train young men and women for those moments while they're practicing, while they're going through that drudgery, and helping them to see that this is all a part of this canvas that you're trying to paint. Well, again, you know, you still have to allow yourself to be coached and taught. And, uh, you know, like Greg was saying, I mean, it's, it's really success is preparation and opportunity meeting up. Because if you're not prepared when opportunity comes, then you can't be successful. And if the opportunity comes and you're not prepared, I mean, it, it, you know, you can turn around, vice versa. But um, I think that, that, that and I, I use something as simple as um, Little Red Rod, Riding Hood, okay, and the three <laughs> houses, and, and, and the house, is it, you know, it's the three pigs, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the three pigs. See, and, uh, and the house is being built with, with straw, with you know, right, right. The, the three different elements: the big wolf, big bad wolf. <laughs> right, right. Huff so, and puff. so, <laughs> so, which which house? Which house do you want? You know, I mean, go back as elementary as that. I mean, which house do you want? Do you want the one that's built in brick? With brick and mortar, that's built with straw, or that's built with you know, it's just got Same, like a twigs, twigs on yes. twigs, exactly. <laughs> um, so I mean, I use that analogy, and I, I ask myself, so which one do you want? I mean, because if you want to be prepared, then then you got to take it slow, and you got to take your time building. Well, my, the bricks. my yeah. instinctive <laughs> reaction is going to be the bricks. Right. So, 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 so they understand and understand that it's going to take us time to build this house. Absolutely. Because yeah, absolutely. if I build this house in a week, and I over here, I took three months to build this house. Not that it would take that long either, but or it should take longer. But which one do you want? And you instinctively, instinctively are going to say, I want the one that clearly you took your time to build. Okay, exactly. now why wouldn't you want me to take my time? Why wouldn't you want to take your time to build to get where you want to get no matter what industry it's in? Exactly. Why wouldn't you want to take your time to get there? So, you know, I, again, I just think that it's, and you got to allow yourself to be open to other ways Absolutely. to learn things and to be exposed to different things. And, you know, as you, as you mentioned, the trombones, well, who knows, if, unless you expose your, your, your young people to a trombone, they might not, we might be holding back one of the greatest that ever Play. would have played it. That's so, you know, it's one of the things that I, I didn't allow my children to say the word weird. Like, they, not, they weren't allowed to say that word. Of course, they, you know, they uttered it every once in a while. I go, hey, hey, because someone does something different that you don't know about, exactly. don't call it weird. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They got Say a new name different. for weird. It's, it's called different. thinking outside the box. Yeah. Thinking outside the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's different. If, it, if something is different, yeah. if something is different, allow yourself to be exposed to it Absolutely. to find out something else about it. Now, if you, that doesn't mean you have to like it or enjoy it, but be open enough that because that weird just shuts yeah. it off. Yeah. If it's it weird, off. Yeah. and people uh, attach negative connotations to it, and then you don't want to be exposed to it. Yeah. And, and and so it's just, a, it's to me, it's it's about being open and allowing yourself to be to be taught. Now I'll tell you how history works. I mean, the very thing you just said, Jimi Hendrix said that in the '60s, and uh, Bootsy Collins on his last album, uh, Funk Capital of the World, actually quoted and had Jimi Hendrix. And then you almost hit that verbatim, line for line, <laughs> what he said about when something happens and it's outside the box, and people don't understand it, they don't want to get into it, they see it as weird, and they back up off of it. So you got little Jimi Hendrix in here. Yeah, you're a funny name. Hey, hey, on that, hold it back. Charles, hold it back. Can you play the guitar, brother? All right, having said that, we're going to take a station break for a few more minutes, then we're going to come back, we're going to talk a little bit with each of these individuals about the things that they have going on in their lives professionally, and we're going to talk a little bit about the HBCU campuses as we come back to the Rolling Ground Sports and Entertainment Show here at The Zone.
When you earn your GED diploma, the barriers in your life fall. Take the first step and get free GED information in your area at 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or yourged.org. Earn your GED diploma and begin your brighter future. Welcome back. We have the, back at the Rolling Grind Sports and Entertainment, Sports and Entertainment Show, shooting again at the Zone Restaurant and Bar located 5753 Crane Highway, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Um, my guests again are Mr. Greg Boyer, to my right, Coach Todd Bozeman, and Mr. Self Empowerment, uh, Wilbur Skipper. As we finished up our last segment, we're talking a little bit about uh, what do we have to do to uh, help position these young men and women who are involved with athletics. We're going to talk a little bit about that athletics, and we're going to take a, a little different turn here. Uh, we're going to talk about um, the historically black colleges and universities and uh, what's happening with them, both in athletics and academics, and we're going to highlight some of uh, some of the uh, accomplishments, achievements, and some of the goals that we have uh, for these institutions moving forward. Now, Todd, you just happened to coach at a historically black college and university. How did you get there? And tell us a little bit about that experience. How did I get there? Yes, sir. Well, uh, I guess the reason why I had a perspective on the fact of making a mistake is because I made a mistake in being a coach at the University of California. Uh, at a BCS institution and uh, having to pay the price for that and then having it to appear that uh, I would be out of coaching forever, um, I didn't want to accept that and uh, eventually had an opportunity to get back in and uh, through uh, the president, Dr. Richardson, uh, it was, uh, we had a meeting between uh, uh, Billy Murphy, I don't know if you know that name, but he's a judge in Baltimore, very established uh, uh, attorney and judge, or was a former judge in Baltimore, been on the wire. Uh, he kind of got a meeting together, and uh, Dr. Richardson uh, sat down and he asked me to tell my story, and I told him the story, and uh, I told him I just wanted an opportunity for someone to hear me out. And once he heard the story, and he said, "You'll be, can, you know, treated as anyone else, like any other candidate," and then I got the opportunity. So I'm very thankful for that. Uh, and then uh, been trying to make the most of that uh, since I've been there. Okay, we got to applaud that opportunity. <laughs> so that's that. That's what brought me to uh, to Morgan State University. And uh, uh, this this year was a challenging season for us. Probably the most challenging season I've had in my entire career. It's a great thing. Uh, yeah, it all it does is help you to you know build up and and. Uh, you know, produce something much better. So, uh, but before that, you know, we'd average 20 wins a season and uh, had uh, won the championship three years in a row and uh, been to three postseason tournaments. And uh, it's 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 been a it's been a tremendous experience. And coaching my son has been absolutely great. Uh, you know, the difference between being at one of the alumnus asked me, "What's the difference between being at say a Cal or being at HBCU?" And I started saying, I started in saying that being at uh, Cal is is like being at a major corporation, and that being at uh, uh, an HBCU is. And he started to say, "A small business." I said, "No, no, no, mom and pop. <laughs> it's 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 that big of a, dis a disparity, and really? it's and it's and it's really that way only because." You know, there it takes funds and a, and a level of commitment. Mm -hmm. You can't just say you want to be with the big boys. You have to you have to put mm -hmm. money into the programs. You know, it takes money to make money, and you have to put the time and effort in. And you also have to allow people to do their jobs. And you can't. It's kind of like what we were talking about with the parents in terms of young people. And you know, any successful organization to me, you have to. You have to delegate, and you have to allow people to do their jobs, and you can't have one person having four titles. You know, those days exactly. are over with, where exactly. one person has four titles. You know, you have one person that does this, one person does the accounting, one person, you know, manages the, the entire shop, one person does, you know, the, the you know, it's kind of like being in a band, and it's, yeah. and it's interesting because I use that with my team. Yeah. I say, you know, you guys listen to your rap music or your whatever music you listen to. <laughs> I say, if you listen to a band, because we grew up listening to bands, exactly. I said, you have, you have your, your lead guitar, your bass, your sax, your trombone, and everybody's playing their own sheet of music, exactly. and, and, and all together it makes a beautiful song. And that's the analogy that I use. So, you know, I try to use that with, with uh, at the HBCU level. I was going to say something that I really shouldn't say, <laughs> but um, and I try to explain I saw that it to coming. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to explain it to them, and 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 a lot of times they don't really get it. And it's a great environment, 
and it's a very nurturing environment, but it also is that same kind of crabs in a barrel thing, True. and that kind of holds you back as well. But, you know, I know that that's a lot more than what you just asked me how to get to that level. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, but I, mean, I had to say that. I, you know, thank you, and I needed that, and that's what we can do on the Rolling Ground Sports <laughs> Entertainment Show. We can say things that we don't get to say on other shows. Thank you for that, Co Coach Todd Bozeman. Having said that, now I rem remember when I was being recruited, and I had Joe Paterno sitting over here, and I had Earl Bruce, Woody Hayes, and that crew over here. And then I had uh, Virginia Union and Howard University uh, all coming at me at the same time. And I remember thinking, okay, I know I'm not going here. I'm going where the big boys are, what I perceive as the big boys. And we talk about that investment. What kinds of things are happening or hasn't happened to keep, to either prevent or not having the willingness to make that kind of investment, especially in athletics, where, especially among African Americans, we predominate in many of these sports. What's keeping some of our institutions from making that critical investment into the stadiums, into the programs, to move up to that level? Any ideas? I would venture to say it's the alumni. Well, I agree. I think yeah. alumni play a big role. You go, like, uh, my wife went to see her daughter. Up in, she's a sophomore at Princeton. Princeton and Harvard. You could look out there in that crowd and you could just see millions and millions of dollars of alumni support. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if the HBCUs are getting anything near that kind of support for the schools that they used to go to. No, it's not, almost well, like once they're close. gone, they yeah. wash the hands yeah. of it, and that's it. You might get a few to kick back, but yeah. I got to say that alumni support is a, a big part of that. Yeah. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, I know for a fact, after following uh, Tom Jordan Morning Show, he does a great job at raising money for uh, those institutions. But the alumni base, I would have to believe, plays a big, big part in that as well. Because when I look at George Washington University, our alumni base is huge. Uh, we just had a meeting with the Alumni Association last week. And the numbers that they were, uh, we were talking about in terms of alumni base and what the percentage of the alumni base is in this general area and the contributions uh, by way of just being involved in, in athletics uh, and the whole program, just phenomenal. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about the HSBCU in terms of that situation, but I would agree that the alumni base does play, play a big role in that. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't uh, support the alumni. I shouldn't say it like that because the older generation of alumnus really support. It's kind of like where it's uh, the 40s on down. Is the, That's the group that, the demographic group that's really not supporting and giving back. And some of that can be traced back to just how they were treated when they were there. So I don't think they really understand the whole culture of, of, of how you treat athletes or how you treat the students. And it's not the, they, they almost have the old school way of you're going to do it this way and you need to, you need to do it on your own because if you do it on your own, you're going to appreciate it more. But it's not that kind of generation, you know, and they, they don't really understand that. So then when they get out, they have more regret than they do, you know, and, and, and like, I'm just glad I'm away from, from this place as opposed to pride. And so that's why you don't, that's why you don't I think, think you see a lot of bit of economics in that too. You know, if you go somewhere and there's a stack of applications and they say, okay, in this stack they got people from a couple of D1 schools and over here they have someone, Howard, Morgan, or whatever. Employers will favor those applications from these other schools. Now, does that mean that they're going to make more money or they have opportunities to make more money? And from the HBCUs, they don't have the opportunities Therefore, not having the income to put back into the school that maybe somebody over here has. It's, it's a trickle-down effect. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that because if you, if you look at it and you look in all the industries, you see so many uh, HBCU graduates that are, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable where they are mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, and the well. levels that, they, mm -hmm. that they're in. Well. Yeah. And it's, 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 so I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, you know, Kevin Frazier is is is, is uh, his father was a coach at, at Morgan and he attended right. Morgan State and, and Kevin's doing doing well and he he when I went out to to L A and just because we are friends he's yeah. exposed me to so many other people yeah. that have come through HBCU route and it's 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 amazing but I just think that there also is just not that. Uh, 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 nurturing of giving back yeah. when they're yeah, younger. Absolutely. So, yeah, so then when they get older, they, you see that regret and, and you see them almost, you know, distancing themselves from it. But yeah. it could be a beautiful thing. 
But uh, again, there's so many different things, aspects that has to change. And you know, I used to think that you could win a national championship from an HBC, but I don't think that you could do it because there's so much infighting yep. that it's really hard and so much of that crabs in a barrel. I mean, it, it is alive now, and well. Now, for those people that are not from this area, you have to explain crabs in a barrel. Well, okay, if you have a bushel of crabs, There's different versions of they're all trying to get out. And every time, one up, every time one gets to the top, all the rest of the crabs at the bottom pull them back down. And they climb over that one so they can get out. So it's a constant flow of as soon as someone gets up there, somebody's trying to pull them back down. That's crabs in a barrel for those that don't know. You're right, you're right. That was, that was good. That's right. <laughs> you know, okay, so, so, so having said that, I mean, we're going to delve into this a lot more um, in our next show. Uh, but uh, as we get ready to depart from you, and I hate to say goodbye, but I must at this time, what I want to do very quickly is from Greg and from Todd, tell us a little bit about what you have going on in the short term, what we can look for from you over the next couple of months, so we can stay tuned, stay connected and see if we can help build some of that institutional support for you as we do with some of these institutions. Greg, I'm gonna start with you. What do you have going? Okay, right now I have scheduled at the Thai Palace in Waldorf, Maryland, also on Crane Highway. Every fourth Thursday, my group, Greg Boy and Pocket Jazz, will be playing there. It's a blend of jazz, funk, and DZ's own indigenous form of music, go-go. It's a combination of all three, and not necessarily one more than the other, but a good time is to be had by all. And also at the same place, uh, the fifth Sunday of the month when there's, I mean, the fifth Thursday, when there's a fifth Thursday, I think that's May and August, my quartet, Greg Boyer Peloton, will be appearing there. And it's acoustic jazz, as you've probably known it, but it's not as great poop on as you probably used to seeing it. Okay. Um, instead of doing, yeah, instead of doing <laughs> Miles and Monk and stuff, we do a little Foreigner, Funkadelic, uh, Steely Dan, Rick James, and we put uh, a jazz twist on all of that. So that's also uh, something you might want to check out. I encourage it, as a matter of fact. So I'm telling you now, man, just listen to you. I'm frozen in my chair. I'm trying to tell you, man, you start saying certain things, man, I start spazzing. All right, but look, all right, Greg Boy and Pocket Change and Greg Boy and Peloton. Pocket Jazz. Pocket Jazz. Yes, yes. And Peloton. Todd, yeah. what you got going on? Well, uh, presently, we're, we're um, you know, our season just ended, and uh, you have the Final Four coming up, and it's been a great tournament so far. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm sure everyone, no one has a perfect bracket. Probably no other than you. <laughs> no one. But, but no one. Uh, it's been a great tournament. And, um, you know, at this point, we're just recruiting and finishing up our uh, recruiting for this particular season. Uh, we're going on a foreign tour in the summer. Uh, foreign tour? Yeah, China. foreign tour, foreign tour. We're actually, <laughs> we're actually going to the Bahamas. So, <laughs> uh, but, you know, it'll give us, give us a chance to come in and practice. Uh, we have a camp, have a camp going on, and uh, it'll be sometime in June. And, uh, the website tbows.com. Tbows. Tbows. B o z e. Gotcha. Dot com. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, at Coach Bows uh, is a, a Twitter. Uh, so I'll do do those kind of things and uh, uh, and that's it. And uh, okay. play some golf. All right. And, uh, yeah. Well, look, we need your help because we're gonna put this whole campaign together to get these young men, especially, off of the streets this summer and get them involved with. Projects uh, in the summertime, like T Bowles' camp, some other camps is coming up. Maybe we even uh, put together some kind of class on how to play the trombone and some other things. <laughs> Mr. Self Empowerment, Wilbur Skipper, Mr. Greg Boyer, Coach Todd Bowles, and I'm Rolling Grimes, signing off from the Rolling Grimes Sports and Entertainment Show. Thank you. See you again very soon.